shall continue to praise him and give him glory because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let us stand it into our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Thank you, Lord. to me, let us go into the house of the Lord, our feet will stand within thy gates, woe Jerusalem. For a day in our course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Well, the planted in the house of our Lord, the flourish in the courts of our God. O Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing the Lord a new song, for he is the marvelous thing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and all the earth sing praise. And we shall make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let us first give Lord hand praise for our dynamic male choir. Son on the drums. Right. They shall glorify us and lead us and making this joyful noise unto the Lord. When they would have done that, the evangelist Andrew Smith will come and lead us to the throne of grace and mercy. In that order.
pray. Gracious and merciful Father. Thank you, Lord. You come with us all with the day and say, thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for our lives now. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you for allowing us to see another Sunday. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Third Sunday, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for Calvary's cross. Yes, Lord. He gave the only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Word, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the church family as a whole. Thank you, Lord. That you bless our leadership from the top down. Thank you. Bless the pastor and his family. Thank you, Lord. Bless each and every family that represented. Thank you. Bless our visiting friends. Thank you. Thank look you. Look upon this Goose Creek community, but not yes, only Lord. Goose Creek. Lord, Lord, look upon this lost world. Lord. Lord. And Lord, many who follow who don't know you for the part of that sin. Yes, Lord. Thank Let you. them be their life for a father. Yes. Glory. And someone may see the glory of yes, you in us, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank for those who are in the hospital. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Lord, that you have the healing and anointing in your world. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our children and our grandchildren. Yes, Thank you. Lord, let our children know that the ways of the sin yes, is death. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that it's still right and you're right. Lord. Lord, it's still right. Glory. Let's get back to you. Let's Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
47 verses 1 through 7. And it reads as follows. Praise ye the Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto the power of God. Yes. For it is pleasant and praises come. The Lord doth go to Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Yes. He telleth the number of the stars. He called them all by their names. Yes. Great is our God and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the meat. He casted the, will, the wicked down to the ground. Yes. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Yes. Sing praise upon the heart of two, our God. Yes. I have just read Psalm 147, verses 1 through 7. Amen. And Amen. God have blessing on the reading of these words. Yes. Amen. 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 From all that dwell below the skies.
Nobody else would like to do that like that. Before that, we greet you this morning in the joy of Jesus, knowing that he is the one that you can call up. Anytime, anywhere, anytime. Amen. 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 For that, we bow our heads first just to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless that you have made. Thank you for allowing us to live, move, and have our being in this. Yes. Yes. God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your favor. Thank you for a measure of health and strength that God that you have given us. We now invite and invoke your spirit in this place. For we know that it dwells within your people. So prick their hearts and their minds now that the Lord they may be open and willing to hear your holy and divine word. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yes. For your servants are listening. It is in Jesus' name that we live with thanksgiving always. And the people of God shall say, Amen. Amen. Not going to be before you long this morning. Just want to encourage you uh, in the season by which we are in, living these days, looking with anticipation, some may even fear or wonder, but there's one thing as believers that we all have and we share with one another is that simple word called hope. Yeah. Uh, I used to wonder a long, many, many years ago when Jesse Jackson was a young man in his prime and his main cliche was always keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Well, hope is not for everybody. Everybody don't have hope. Some people have uh, anticipation. Some people have what they will tell you that they have a handle on things. And some people simply just do not care. But I don't know about you, but I care about this world in which I live because I am reminded that this world belongs to God. Amen. And for that, if I am in this world, I have received Jesus Christ, I also belong to God. So we're going to talk a little bit about keeping hope. Alive. Look with me in a passage of scripture in the book of Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 1. I want to emphasize something about Hebrew. Uh, doing my theological training, even in seminary, nobody seems to have a handle on who really wrote it. You'll hear a different name. What hey, that right before? You'll hear a different name about who wrote it all the time. But what, what, what's important is not who wrote it, but what it says. And the emphasis, Hebrew writer, some folks say he was a preacher, he had a lot of, most of his emphasis centered around faith. Always talking about faith. Y'all remember, you know, Hebrew 11, and what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. So if you are a man or a woman of faith in God, hurry up, clear that up, because some folks got faith in other people. Some people got faith in finances. Some people got faith in their youthfulness. Those things won't last. But faith in God is eternal. Which is the ultimate goal by which we expect to be one day, all of us, to meet him in eternity. Because things down here ain't always what it look like. Amen. So Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, I have extracted those two verses just to bring about a message to our attention. According to the King James Version, Hebrew chapter 1, Verse 1 and 2, we find these words recorded. God, who at sun-dry times and in divers manner spec in time pass unto the fathers 
by the prophets hath in these days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world the world Foolish to form on that. I don't know why, but I'll tell you why in a minute. Because we live in all kinds of worlds. This passage of scripture, when you break it down, I know some of you are already reading it in your different version in the Bible. It says, what it says for back of lack of better word is that God, somebody say God. 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 That's, uh, that, 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 that's about the most dynamic and in the, in the, in the utopia of your existence. Is God Yahweh? God, yeah. one who created us, the one who, who who keeps us, the one who calls the sun to shine, yeah. and the sun to go down in one side and rise in the other. The God who puts the moon where up there, and sometimes there's a full moon, and there's a half moon, and there's a quarter moon, and nobody really cares about what kind of moon it is because it ain't nothing you can do about the moon. Because that's God. I'm talking about God. Now, I'm not talking about your daddy or my daddy or your granddaddy. I'm talking about God. It says, who at sun-dry times and diverse manner. What that means is God in various occasions. God and when things happen, he sometimes do things unexpectedly. God in sun-dry times some of the worst situation in our lives when we look at it, it just simply doesn't look, but God on his own time Amen. he spoke to the prophets yeah. the text says yeah. Isaiah Jeremiah, Nehemiah Hezekiah then all these people God spoke to to tell them to speak to the people. Yes, yes. Reverend Joshua, Reverend Ford, Evangelist Smith, Reverend Frazier, God has ordained us that in various occasions and times permitted to us to speak about God. Uh, uh, he did it with the prophets way back then. Yes. We talk about one of them this morning in the church school lesson, Hezekiah, who proclaimed himself to be a faithful man, but Hezekiah didn't want anything to do with death. Jesus. I don't know how many Hezekiah in here this morning, no answer. Yeah. All of us in there want to get to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't seen no volunteer trying to get one up in here. Neither did Hezekiah. He said, Lord, I've done this for you. I've done that for you. Yes, now you done sent that prophet to me to tell me to get my house in order. <laughs> my, my brothers, my sisters, the fact of the matter is all of us need to get our house in order. Yes, I don't know about your house and you don't know about my house, but we all need from time to time to clean house. Yes. I ain't talking about that building, that great beautiful building you're going back to when you leave it. I'm talking about this house, this temple. Every now and again, Amen. we need to get it in order. Amen. Because on your best day, and yeah. your best thoughts, yeah. whatever it is you're trying to do to make things better for you, it may not be what God wants Amen. for Amen. you. Amen. Everything you want ain't necessarily what God wants. Amen. That's why we don't always get what we want. That's right. Amen. Because God loves us too much to give us everything we want. Because if we got everything we want, we could very well be fall into destruction. I keep playing this number. I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. God be glad you came here. Because if you're about my age, over 50, if you hit, you're going to get hit. <laughs> If your children don't get you, if your grandchildren don't get you, if all them children you don't know is yours don't hit you, you gonna get hit. And God love you too much to hit.
So that ought to tell you something. You can't put your faith in the devil. But you can put your faith in God. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? The train of thought of the message this morning I want to leave with you is entitled God's Timeless Message of Hope. God's Timeless Message of Hope. First of all, time belongs to God. Yeah. When we study our Bible, when we go to the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. it tells us what God did on the first day, yes. what he did on the second day, yeah. all the days up to the sixth day. Yeah. What did he do on the Sabbath day? Rest. Everybody needs some rest. God set the example for it. Nobody told God what to do on the first day. Nobody told him what to do on the second day. Or any days up until the sixth day. But the seventh day, he said, to rest. That says to me that God was the originator of time in the first place. See, 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 see. Your time is not always God's time. But God's time can immediately be turned into your time. When we receive a great big old blessing, <coughs> the first thing we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All my life, it's about time. It's about God time. Because when the bad thing comes, the bad things fall upon us, and it seems like the weight of the world is on our shoulders and we're just going down and down and down and you cry, God! Why me? Why not you? It's in God's time. Everything that happens to us that looks bad is not always bad. Remember, pure gold is not pure gold, pure gold until what? It's refined. It got to go through the fire. Sometimes we got to go through the fire. But it doesn't mean that he does not see us as gold. Trying to make sense, church, out of all the unusual things that has happened, things that has transpired, Simply through this year can really lead one to wonder or to surmise what could possibly happen next. Oh, we might well say the world is ever changing. Some of the changes are good, and they are good if we use it with good intent. Folks talk about AI. AI, I still don't understand it. And AI, I really don't want anything to do with it. I really don't. Now, now, now I know young people with technology and the age we live in, that's fine. But AI tells me that somebody can hear me tomorrow and tomorrow ain't even come yet. Amen. They do anything with me about tomorrow. And folks say, well, that's a good, that, that can be good. You know, and that's the problem with the world when God don't put things in our way. But these things happen in the time that it happened because God allows it to happen in this time yeah. so that we will not so much be beneficial from what happens, but we need to understand that when we got it, God had something to do with it in the first place. Yeah. And the question then should become, what is it that God wants me to do with this? I have this knowledge. I have this gift. What is it that God wants me to do with this knowledge and with this gift? Should I get rich? And if I got rich, would I be happy? <coughs> Some of those obvious things God is doing right now in this time is showing us what richness can do for some people. Oh, yeah. Why is it that Elon Musk and Donald Trump come so close together? Best friends in the world, almost. 
He's putting up a hundred and forty five million dollars, whatever you need for your campaign. You got it. That is to say that there are people in this world who thinks that because of what they have and the riches of their possession, they can buy things in this world. Well, you can buy all you want to buy. You can buy the White House. You can buy the outhouse. But you sure can't buy me. And the reason why you can't buy me is that I've already been paid for. I've been redeemed. I was sick, deep in sick, far from the master. But the master of the sea heard my spirit. And from the water, he lifted me. Now say, now say, am I? Love lifted me. Love lifted you. When nothing else to do. Love lifted me. Doesn't matter who gets in the White House. Doesn't matter who operates the Senate or the House of Representatives. I've already been represented by it. Matter of fact, I'm being represented by the Senate representative right now. The one that represents me is Jesus. He is my advocate. He is my lawyer. He is the one that sits high, looks low, see all my enemies around me. But he protects me. How do I know? Because early this morning, if the devil had his way, I wouldn't have got up. You wouldn't have got up. But I know that grace and for that mercy that abounds in me, yes. that abounds in you. Mm -hmm. He looked way beyond us. Yes. 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 our need. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The need that we need to know the most is we need to know yes. who did it. Yes. 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 God did it. Yes. And as you live through this day, you should ask yourself the question as often as you, why did God wake me up this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Yeah. Am I lucky? There's no such thing as love. Yeah. I had an uncle bless him in heaven. He said, boy, ain't no such thing as love. Luck is where preparation meets. That is to say, if you prepare for something, yeah. if you prepare for the right thing, yeah. God will grant you the desire yeah. of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. We often ask ourselves the question in this world, what does all this mean? Why is our nation divided? Well, you can just stop and think for a minute and call it, well, I mean, I want to say, change to how old you are. Ain't nothing new about this world being divided. It's far back because I couldn't remember. Ahead, it's always been divided. When I look in the Bible, it's been divided. Moses dealing with them all through the traveling to the promised land. Promise to inherit a land of milk and honey. But the people, they still complain. They complained because it wasn't Moses they were complaining about. Many of them were complaining that God took them out of Egypt in the first place. Because they saw things different when he was president. I had more money in my pocket. Things wasn't so high. But come on now. If you've been around just for a little while, you ever seen a year go by where everything still costs or lower than it was last year? Nope. Cars, food, clothing. Doesn't matter what it is, everything is going. Everything. Even the AME church budget. Yes. 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 Yes.
except the promise of Jesus Christ. He says, one day I'll come down there and I'll be coming down with a new heaven. The new Jerusalem. The new city of peace. Jaru city. Salam of peace. And that's really what suits our case. That's really what we need down here. We don't need materialistic things. Because materialistic things we cannot take with us. And sometimes it hinders us. Because when you got something somebody else don't have, they want what you have, and sometimes they try to take it away. Sometimes it don't be strangers, it be your own family trying to undermine you. Amen, somebody. She think he's, th he's that and all of that. He think because he's a preacher. I know God too. I know God. I don't know who God is. But I know God. <laughs> Folks will say things just was on the top of their mind. But what does that all mean? When will all this craziness in this world go away? Why do bad things happen to good people? Have you ever asked yourself any of these questions? Mm -hmm. Then if you have, I want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. The question about the oracles of life has been asked by people back then in biblical days, and they're asking the same question right now. Who did God turn the rain over to when Moses got too old? Thank you, sir. You hear good now. I like that. And you know what Joshua did when Joshua got to the river of Jordan? Joshua was leading the same. See, people get hard on Moses, but Moses at some time had asked God to kill him. He said, why don't you just kill him? Because see, you give me these stiff-necked people. <laughs> you send me to that big old church over there with all them people up in there. And I see all the people. And I say, oh Lord, I got a big old church. I got two-third devils and maybe a third of Christians in there. Do you know that will kill you? It will kill you, brave y'all dead, if you let it. But I remember who sent me. I remember who keeps me. Joshua told them that the river doesn't look out. Moses is old. Frustrated. And because of that, God took him up. Moses ain't had no fuel. The Bible says God just, in that right river, God just took him up. Yeah, he had no big time fuel. That means that even though Moses got upset and cracked that rock, when God told him not to do it, God said, I see, you're getting old now, you're heading yes. across. <laughs> see, 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 now, 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 the older we get, sometimes we want to make our own conversation, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> talk about it. Trees and people eating people and eating the animals. <laughs> Come on now. If you said me and somebody told you somebody eating dogs and cats, Lord, and you go tell somebody at somebody else that, they're going to look at you and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Somebody need to reach that family member and, and, and give them some counseling, no counseling, put them in an institution somewhere. Because normal people don't see stuff like that. No. Normal people don't say. So Joshua says to them, watch it. I got I to go. Joshua said, now here we are. Y'all the same people. Big group of people who Moses had. He said, yes, what well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Those who are on Baal's side, you move over there. And those who are on the Lord's side, you move over here. Because only the one that's on the Lord's side is going with me. In other words, I ain't going to put up with the stuff Moses put up here. You're going to stay right there where you are. And we who want to get to the other side. We who want to get to the promised land. We who want to see Jesus in eternity. We're going to go over to the other side. The text said, Joshua, he sent the priests first and told them to get some stones while you're on the way to the other side. 
take those stones with you so that when you get to the other side, before the people get over there, I want you to set up an altar. You know why God told Moses to do that? Because people have to understand as simple as it may have seemed to you to get to the other side, you couldn't have done it unless God had helped you. Amen. The only reason Egypt got across, the only reason why Egypt was, was, was chasing Israel, the only reason they got to the other side is because God opened up the Red Sea. No other way they would have got there. So whatever ocean is in your way, whatever mountain you have to cry or cross, just remember God is able. If he did it for Moses, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Joshua, he'll do it for you. If he allowed Nehemiah to build up the wall again, he'll do it for you. But the only person who can do it is God. I'm coming to you this morning without a word of hope. I look back over the days and the month of this year. There's so much to be said. So much things we can say happen the good, the bad, and the ugly. But when I look back over my life, and I think things over, all of my good days outweighs my bad head. Come on. And for that, I yes. will not complain. Because yes. God's been good to me. Yes, Lord. God's been good to you. Yes, Lord. For if Justin had called for satisfaction, yes, Lord. I wouldn't have had another chance. Yes, Lord. If some people were to be the one to judge whether or not I get another chance, I wouldn't be here. Right. And you wouldn't be here either. But all for the grace of God. All for the mercy of God. He looked. He looked. And he provided me. In spite, church, in my conclusion, in spite of how things may appear, we receive a message of timeless hope in our lives every day. And most importantly, in that message is a message of love. God's love. For God so loved the world. The world didn't love him then, and the world don't love him now. That's why I use that word in the text, plural. All things, he said, by Christ. All things by whom also he made the world. We live in different worlds. That's why things that seem so simplistic to us is confusing to the other part of the world. Jesus says, I'll give you a parable. Do you not know that as simple as a parable sounds in the Bible? The reason Jesus said it in a parable because everybody could not understand the parable. The only person who could understand a parable is the person who had entrusted in him. God tell you, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long it will be. Wait on the Lord. Isaiah said, those who wait on the Lord to rise up to wings. They shall run. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Teach me how to wait. Thank you, Lord. Because when I wait on the Lord, I know you. Yes, Lord. We just need to trust the message. Trust the message of the sender. I'm just the messenger, but I'm not the sender. So let us say, set it down, Lord. Set it down. Set down your yes. holy Lord. Set it on down. I can't preach right yes. until you set it on down. I can't shout right yes. until you set it on down. I can't praise right yes. until you set it on down. Yes. 
Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. God, we come to you right now as humbly as we know how, God. Sing, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us, God. Thank you. God, you've just been so very good to us, Lord. Lord, thank you. Lord. Lord, most times you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Lord God, as we come right now, God, you already know every situation, God. You already know every need, God. You already know every desire, God. God, we come to you right now, God, saying that we need you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we need you today like we've never needed you before, Lord. God, all of the turmoil in this world, God. All of the senseless fighting, all of the senseless killings, Lord. Lord, this world, we need you. God, just not locally, God. But God, on a higher level, God, in our politics, God, we need you. God, in our schools, we need you. God, in our churches, we need you. God, we're leaning and depending on you right now, God. God, look over the shepherd of this great house, God. Yes, Jesus. God, continue to heal, God, as only you know how, God. God, if there's anyone that's sick amongst us, God, if it's in your will, God, we ask for healing right now, God. God, any bereaved families, God, allow them to know joy comes in the morning, God. God, we love you. And we place no one before you. God, if there's one among know you for the pardoning of their sins, God. God, we ask that you touch right now. God, bring them into your fold right now. Lord God, look over the community in which our church resides, God. God, allow us to reach out and discover the needs, God. God, we are the laity of the church. And Lord, we ask that you do a mighty work in each and every one of us, God. That allows us not just to celebrate you on Sundays, God. But allows us to celebrate you every single day, God. Allows us to come out of these four walls, God. And do a work for you, God. So, Lord, we know that faith without works is dead. And, God, when our days here are over, yes, Lord. God, when no man can work, God, we're looking for a place of rest in you. Amen. And when we cross that river, God, we truly want to hear serving a God. Well done. Well done, thy great and faithful servant. God, we don't want to hear that I know you not. Anointing on each and every one of us. 
place and yes. in this sanctuary. Yes. Thank you. Today I have had a prior conversation with our beloved sister Lavetta Green and here stands with her, her great son. She has decided in the pricking of her heart to join this church. So long, I thought you were already a member. She comes yeah. to Sunday. Yeah. Not just a lie, they every Sunday. Amen. And for that, we want to thank God for you. Yeah. And we want you to know that even before I begin my reading, we welcome you here. Amen. And this is a place of love. And it ought not, it ought not be anything but love. And so we welcome you. And this time, we understand that you've already been baptized into the faith. Am I correct? All right. This time, Sister Yukuku, the secretary, shall present you to me. And I will begin my reading. And Reverend Joshua and I shall bring you in. Pastor, we present Sister Loretta Green, who is now ready to be received into full membership. Dear beloved, the scripture teaches us that the church is the household of God, the body of which Christ is head, and that in it design of the gospel to bring together in one all whose are Christ's. The fellowship of the church is the communion that is member and joy one with another. Amen. The end of this fellowship, the maintenance of sound doctrine, and the ordinance of that power, godly admonition, and discipline, which Christ has committed to his church is for the promotion of holiness. It is the duty of all people to unite in the fellowship of his own, only, the, only those that are planted in the house of the Lord and that will flourish in the courts of our God. His more particular duties are to promote peace and unity, to bear one another's burden, to prevent each other from stumbling, to seek in intimacy of a friendly society among themselves to continue steadfast in the faith and worship of the gospel and to pray and sympathize with each other. Among its privileges are the peculiar incitement of holiness for the sharing of God's word. And Christ's chief ordinance placing persons under the watchful care of pastors and enjoy the blessing which are promised only to those who are of the household of faith. In this holy fellowship, this person, Sister Green, before you, who have already received the sacrament of baptism, comes seeking admission. Reverend Joshua. Reverend Ford, would you please come? Dearly beloved, you are now seeking the great privilege of union with the church which our Savior has purchased with his own blood. We rejoice in the grace of God given unto you and that he has called you to be his followers. You have heard how blessed are the privileges and how solemn are the duties of membership in Christ church. And before you are fully admitted, it is proper that you do here publicly renew your vows, confess your faith, and declare your purpose by answering the following questions. Do you, in the presence of God and of this congregation, renew the solemn promise contained in the baptismal covenant, ratifying and confirming the same and acknowledging yourself, bound faithfully to observe and keep thy covenant and all God's and all things contained therein? Your answer should be, I do. Have you saving, saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Your answer should be, I trust I, have. I trust I have. Do you possess friendly feelings towards all the members of this church? Your answer should be, I do. I do. Do you believe in the doctrine of the Holy Scriptures as set forth in the Articles of Religion of the African Methodist Episcopal Church? Your answer should be, I do. Will you be governed by the discipline of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, hold sacred the ordinances of God, and try as much as possible to promote the welfare of fellow members and the advancement of the kingdom of God? Your answer should be, I will. Will you give your time, your talent, and your money for the support of the gospel, church poor, and various ministries of the church? Your answer should be, I will. 
Sister Green would return, please, I would love to face the congregation. Is there any reason why this sister should not be received into full membership? No. You can turn back and face the congregation. For that being said, we cordially welcome you into the fellowship of Mount Zion Airy Church, which is the Church of God, and in the light of our Christian love, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Thank you for being a part of us. And may God grant you that you may be a faithful and useful member of the church military till you are called to the fellowship of the church triumphant, which is faultless before the presence of God. God bless you. We love you, as we said, and we look forward to you coming and fellowshiping with us. And I hope you bring your son along as often as you want to come as well. Okay? Praise the Lord. Reverend Ford, would you give us? There you go. What a fellowship. You stay to the congregation. The congregation will come down again. certain of, but you're too wise to make a mistake and too just to do wrong. So we bow our hands this hour and lift her up you, O oh God. We lift her up in our spirit. Wherever she is right now, we ask you to move by your spirit. Father God, please do all the good that you see her standing in need of. Lord, strengthen her most of all in her faith walk. Have her always to be reminded and those around her to remind her that you promise never to leave. Never to forsake. You're a great God all the time. So we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We say, Have your way, Lord, and do what only you can do. It is in Jesus' name that we pray with thanksgiving always, and the people of God shall say, Amen. Amen. We pray her strength. All right? Praise the Lord. Thank you all so much Praise for the Lord. worship experience today. Thank you for all that has transpired this far. We're getting ready to leave this Father Almighty. Make them heaven and earth. And Jesus Christ, 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 Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, Son of Pontius was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He is saved in the heavens. And sit it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. God be the Holy Spirit, the church universal, communion of saints, the gift of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And so our hearts have been made glad. Heaven rejoice because he has given unto us another one of his saints. Sister Lavetta Green. We thank you for that, Father. Teach us how to teach her and show her the love that is desired here in Mount Zion. Yes. Now we shall prepare to leave this place with never your presence. By once again entering into our doxology with praises. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here.
times past unto the fathers by the prophet, hath in these days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. My brothers, my sisters, boys and girls, in spite of whatever you see that's going on around you, remember God's timeless message of hope. That is to say that God is always on time. So keep your faith. Keep your faith. Keep your faith. I'm the people of God shall say.